Monster Madness. There's been so many Dracula movies that it's almost impossible to keep track. It's no wonder why, because it's one of those stories that deserves being retold generation after generation. By the 90s, it was time to revive the count again for new audiences. This version was given all the treatments of a big-scale blockbuster, including a large budget, mainstream actors, lavish production design, and a highly acclaimed director none other than Francis Ford Coppola. A side note, one of the producers was named Fred Fuchs, best known in the video game world as the inspiration for the non-existent Fred Fox. One minor gripe I have with the film that I must get out of the way is that it begins with a backstory to Dracula that was never in the novel. All around there are many differences, which are expected, but the movie is called Bram Stoker's Dracula. I think if you're going to put his name on the title, you better stick as close to the book as possible. But with that said, it is much closer than most film versions. To adapt the Bram Stoker novel faithfully has been attempted many times before, including the 1970 version, Bram Stoker's Count Dracula, starring Christopher Lee. This version was also pretty darn close, but also has its differences. The movie is a fresh new take with a unique vision, and that's why I think it would have been best to call it Coppola's Dracula, which has already sort of become the film's unofficial title. The movie is very much a visual work of art, Almost every shot is worthy of being framed on your wall. When I saw this for my first time, I remember seeing the eyes superimposed over the sky and immediately being entranced. Being a huge fan of the Bela Lugosi Dracula, I was always against remakes of my favorite classic films, but when I saw that shot, I knew instantly that I was watching something new and special. Then I saw Dracula and laughed my ass off. Really? What's up with the hair? What were they thinking? I mean, seriously, what were they thinking? The actor, of course, is the super talented Gary Oldman, the modern day man of a thousand faces. He's good in everything he's in. His acting has a wide range, and on top of that, he always seems to undergo wild makeup changes. In all the movies I've seen of his, it took me many years to start to realize that it was the same actor. Even in this one film, he goes through several looks. Dracula changes from an old man to a young man, and other times he's a wolf or a giant bat. But of all the different appearances of Dracula in this film, I'll always remember that stupid beehive hairdo, or whatever you'd call it. It's unfortunate that it ruins part of the movie for me. Every major version of Dracula has its iconic image that you remember, something that pops into your mind right away whenever the movie's mentioned. Nosferatu has the creepy shadow on the wall, the 1931 version has Lugosi's staring eyes, the Hammer version has Christopher Lee's bloody fangs, and then you have this. This is one blunder, but the rest of the overall design of the movie is fantastic. I could praise the visuals forever, but unfortunately, the visuals come before everything else. Some of the acting, especially from Keanu Reeves, is wooden and hollow. The narrative structure is weak. Whenever I watch it, I never feel hooked or drawn into the story. My attention is always on the technical details. It just feels like a bunch of over-the-top vignettes. Short little scenes that each seem to be exploding with drama. It may come off as a little bit disjointed, like separate epics are strewn all together, but to be fair, the novel itself is told through all the different journals and letters written by all the characters. Each one has its own feel and its own writing style. So with the movie, they managed to capture some of that vibe. As a horror movie, I think it's a great visionary epic. The only reason I would be hard on it is because it's Dracula. It could have done better justice. That's not to say that the Bela Lugosi version didn't have its flaws, but that movie is a timeless classic. I am Dracula. This one does not go down in history the same way. It could never be as important to the genre, but for the good things I like about it, it's worth seeing.